Hello and welcome to uh, this week's video. It's a little bit uh, posted a little bit later than I normally would, but uh, things happen. Um, a couple things. Um, we have an election coming up, so make sure you vote. Um, we have our speeches coming up, so you should be choosing your topics already. And let's see what else is there. This video will be focusing on some basic steps I want you to take for your informative speech. You've already done an informative speech. That was the first speech. Your future planning speech was an informative and a chronological speech pattern. You've already done this. Now you're adding research and facts and citation and I want a little bit more polished, a little bit uh, better. So there's some three key areas I, I, I wanna focus on. Uh, the first one is the idea of your main point structure. Um, the first uh, speech you had to give had your chronological order being uh, past, present, and future. And inside those th three main points, you were supposed to cover um, the general idea of past, present, and future in your life story that is getting you to your future goal, your future planning. Now, this needs to be a little bit uh, more structure. You can't just throw facts or stories out there. You have to have a little structure. So let me get into that. I'm gonna do that by, as always, sharing the screen. I always also like to minimize the amount of my face. Since my face is my quarantine head, I should call it because of my, uh, my hair. And, Anyways, so, so we see here is our outline you're supposed to be using for your speeches and pretty basic outline. We covered this in a little bit more detail in our previous um, videos in our, in our classes. Now, what I want to focus on, and I, and I talked about this a bit, is, for example, main point one, summary of your main point. In the definitions I gave for this, I said that it should be a summary couple sentences to, to summarize what the main point is about like two to three sentences kind of getting you started on your overall main point. And your summary sentences should be um, saying what you're, you're about to talk about. So for example, in the informative speech that you did on the past, I always use the example of uh, back when I wanted to be a film director and I talked about my past and loving amuse, uh, movies and escapism. And when you get into that, that idea, the summary of this, I'm gonna cover my past and I'm gonna talk about these two things in my past. The same thing here. By the way, you've already done this in your English classes or any class that you've written essays. Usually your first, when you're talking about paragraphs, supporting paragraphs in an essay, we're talking paragraph two, three, four, you know, whatever's in between the introduction and the conclusion paragraphs. Um, usually the first sentence is a sentence that tells your reader what you're about to talk about in the paragraph. Same thing here. That is what the main point summary sentences should be. And so I always look at the main point summary sentences as this. I, uh, flowery, elaborating language at the beginning of it, but at the end of the summary sentences, I highlight the two things I'm gonna focus on in the main point. So one of the band speeches is cartels. And if I was doing a speech on the cartels and my main point I was gonna cover was like the history of the cartels in my first point. Um, maybe I focus on the, you know, the cartels in Colombia and then the cartels in Mexico. And at the end of my summary sentences, I, I would say something like, and that is why the cartels started in Met Colombia and they ended up in, they're now, you know, strongest in Mexico. See how that works? At the end of the summary sentences for your main point. So this area right here, you end with the two things that you're gonna highlight in your main point. By the way, all your main points should only be two sub points. I don't want you to get too elaborate or too crazy two sub points, all right? That's how it works, two sub points. And so your last sentence in your main point summary should 
highlight what you're going to talk about in your main point. And the best way to do that is that last sentence covers the two things, sub point uh, A and sub point B. So that's the first thing. Your summary sentence should, should be like that. Why am I using? I'm using a pencil to point. I'm using a pen to point. In reality, I should be doing this. All right. This sentence here should be the last sentence, some key words from some point A, some point B. You don't have to define it, but you just some key words from some point A, some point B in that last sentence for the main point summary. Okay. And then you get in your sub points and there should be coordination on that because your first speech, you were just talking about your past. You're telling these stories. You're telling these little things about your life or, or in your present. You're talking about the classes you're taking. There should be coordination. And I, and I introduced that idea and that concept to you when I covered um, the main points in the first videos, which is, um, for example, if you're doing a concept, one of the banned speeches um, is the coronavirus. If you were talking and you're using sub point A to define what the coronavirus pandemic is. So you are actually defining in sub point A what a pandemic is and there's definitions and you use your reference or whatever citation you want to use that is the examples of what a, a pandemic is and then sub point b you talk about maybe some pandemics in the past so you have one sub point being like a explanation or introduction to a concept and then sub point b being examples of that concept or explanation you can also do it with cause and effect when you're talking about the causes because your main points are going to be causes. Main point one, main point two are causes. And so what you need to focus on is when you talk about the causes, let's say you're, um, what's another band speech? Oh, serial killers, serial killers. And you're doing cause and effect. And you're talking about mental health and, um, and things of that nature. Um, you talk about, you're talking about case studies. And so one of your uh, main points is case studies of past serial killers. Again, you can't do that. You can't do this speech. Um, you have the two different case studies, sub point A, sub point B. That is the kind of coordination. Two distinct areas in your main point. That is what the main point coordination is. You summarize and say, this is what I'm going to cover, these two areas. And then you cover it in your main points. It doesn't have to be elaborate. It doesn't have to be complicated or complex. It's just that I'm going to cover this and you say A and B, and then you cover A and B. And they should be two distinct things um, because when they're two distinct things, your audience is aware of that. If it's just the same thing, if it sounds like the same kind of thing. So uh, the, especially for informative, the best thing is your sub point A should always be some kind of concept or, you know, concept or definitions or um, instructions if you're doing a how to. And then uh, sub point B is explanation of those things. That's the easiest, the, the least complex. Okay. So that is the first part um, main point structure. And um, um, if you're doing cause and effect, if you're doing cause and effect, main point one should be cause, main point two should be cause, and main point three should be the effects. All right. So uh, topical, I told you look up the terms. Um, spatial is, a, is in that order. Chronological, um, same thing. And the only other one that is allowed is cause and effect for your informative. If you do cause and effect, Main point one should be covering the causes and main point two should be covering the causes. So, and then the third one is the effects. Um, so, and if you do, just to let you know on um, cause and effect, um, the two causes should be two distinct. So if you're talking about pollution, um, you, you know, you're talking about the pollution of, of water, uh, maybe the first one being, um, main point one being something of a pollution from a certain industry and then main point two from another completely different industry or, or something of that nature or uh, lack of um, lack of effort. Um, 
um, in controlling the pollution. So you see how that works. So if you, uh, this is just, I'm just pointing this out for cause and effect students. Um, main point one should be a, a cause, main point two should be a, another different cause, and uh, main point three should be the effects, all right? All right, let's get to the second part of this, and that is the explanation. Okay, so right here, I'm, I'm just going over the basics on what these should be in your informative. Again, summary, the last sentence summary covering what you're going to cover, main point A, uh, sub point A, sub point B, and then two distinct uh, things in the sub points A and B. Now let's talk about how do you talk about explaining things and concepts and so forth. So I'm going to give you an example of something. When I was in high school, oh, so long ago, it was so, so long ago, um, <laughs> uh, I cheated on in a class. Uh, we were we were in physics and my group, we had to decide at the very beginning, our groups, we rotated groups, but your first group um, was going to be the group that you give the big project for. So there were, we're going around the circle. We were supposed to look up topics and um, I cheated. Um, I, we were sitting there and I looked up and I saw a fish tank. And I remember a, an experiment from the TV show, Mr. Wizard, when I was a kid. And I was like, I knew what that experiment was. And that experiment was to explain nuclear fission or nuclear reaction with mousetraps. What they did on Mr. Wizard was they put a bunch of mousetraps with uh, uh, ping pongs in there. And what they do is they drop one mouse, uh, one ping pong ball, and then boom, everything, they all take, take off all at the same time. So we we did that all all because i was sitting there remembering mr wizard and i saw the fit uh the mousetrap that i remember okay this is something high concept nuclear fission nuclear reactions and i we can explain it with some sort of simplistic thing of mousetraps and a fish tank and it worked and by the way we got an a um but that that is what explanations are about in this in this class. So I'm going to take this off and I'm going to stop share, stop share your screen for a sec. Um, that's what you need to do. Um, informative speeches is, is trying to introduce new ideas, new subjects or a different take on them. And you want to get the audience interested, but not everybody knows what you're talking about. When we were doing that nuclear um, project, um, not everyone knew about the atoms um, blowing up and, and the nuclear reaction, but everyone knows what a uh, ping pong is and everyone knew what a mousetrap was and a fish tank was. You put those three things together and you have a pretty neat de demonstration. I'm not asking you to do a demonstration. You're not doing a demonstration. No, no models, no objects in the class. But it's that simple thing. We remembered something that can easily explain by things that the students already knew. And that's what you should be doing uh, when it comes to explaining these new concepts and these new definitions and so forth. Um, as the example, and I, I think I covered it in class when you define the outlet stores. Um, if I was talking about old outlet stores from when I was a kid, they're not around anymore. You know, factory um, rejects and so forth. We don't have factories that manufacture uh, Levi jeans anymore. So I, I, I would have to explain using examples of modern stores and explaining the clearance racks. Imagine a whole store of clearance racks. That's what old outlet stores used to be like. See how that works? I, I We all seen the Target and Walmart clearance areas or the ones that are in the back of Ralph's, the little shelves that they have we've all seen that and just to explain what old outlet stores used to be like i just say hey the whole store was like was like those clearance racks the same thing with your explanation it's a good idea to when you're explaining things try to relate it to something else so for example um you know not everyone has a science so i, I use the mouse trap and the ping pong as an example but imagine if you're doing the baking the cake not everyone knows how to cook. I know how to cook. Um, I'm actually a very good cook. I used to be better before this happened. Um, but um, not everyone knows how to cook. 
but everyone knows a little bit something about following instructions. Um, so use that, connect with that. Not everyone knows how to cook, but they might know some, quite a bit of people know how to fix a car or work on a project or put together Ikea furniture, or they know how to download TikTok videos. Uh, so they know the steps for different things. And so if you're trying to explain the concept of following instructions on something that is new to them, you relate it to something they already know. You know, use uh, examples. One of the best topics, uh, I said spatial is one of the topics you can use, uh, speech patterns you can use. Spatial is a, is a great example of this uh, because spatial is the proximity from the, um, from the speaker to, to the end goal. And usually it's dealing with distance and so forth. You could do um, cell structures and so forth. But the easiest spatial example is a, doing an informative on a, a certain trip. Um, I think I used in class, I talked about uh, one of my favorite things I've ever been able to do, and I've done it multiple times, is take the train from Frankfurt, Germany, up to Münster. And uh, quite a bit of that um, train ride is along the Rhine River, where you see castles and this beautiful landscape and these giant boats going down and all this beautiful stuff, uh, memorable stuff. And spatial uh, speech like that. Not everyone has taken a train along a river, but we've taken long drives. And, you know, uh, we could talk about, you know, um, if you've been on, on, a, on a long road and it's boring and all of a sudden the sun is setting and the sky changes color. That is what it's like when the train leaves a certain corner and the Rhine is ahead of you. See how that works? You have something that people can maybe are more familiar with. And this is where regional stuff comes in. If you're giving a speech in Los Angeles and you were doing the distance thing in the spatial, you would probably try to use trips that probably occur to people here in the LA area. So this, this second part of this video, try to, Think of things that relate to students that are maybe a little bit different from what you're talking about to try to connect with them. The analogies, the similes, and the metaphors. These are things that are, can be used to, you know, in sub point A or sub point B, uh, especially sub point A, when you're trying to talk about the concept, finding little things that might connect with them. Um, so with the coronavirus, uh, this is entirely new to all of us, what, what we're dealing with and so forth. But we've all taken vaccines for the most part. We've all had health checks to get into public education and school. We've all been to the doctor, hopefully, in some way or another. And we've all had flu seasons and so forth. So while we have never had a pandemic like this, if someone, which by the way, coronavirus is one of the banned topics, but if we if you if you were doing that, you can relate little things and so forth. Um, it's kind of like uh, blocking people from um, uh, stores and so forth. Oh, you know, everyone in LA has been on the freeway when it's been, when something has been cut off because of some thing down there, and you can't move at all. You can't get anywhere. Or something cut off or, or like during fires or there's something out there that could connect something new that you're trying to explain to somebody with something that they already know and you don't have to do it for everything but find general things um, to help explain stuff okay this is just suggestions and so forth finally there are facts and elaborations so one of the things that students do in these speeches is they throw out these facts and they think what they need to do is throw out a bunch of facts. You don't have to do that. This is not a dissertation. This is not a thing where you're trying to show everyone that you know the most stuff. What you're trying to do is be informative and informative is not just giving facts, but explanation on those facts. So let me, let me get an example, we'll go back to share screen. And of course, I'm going to talk about 
let's get this talk about this right here. Uh, my hometown. This is my hometown of Fresno, California. And so I, I, I talk about where I'm from and so forth. And it, it, it's an important part of my background. And I, I have used it to explain other parts of it and so forth. But when I talk about Fresno, where I'm from, you know, I, I could talk about the growing up in, in this area right over here, where actually this, this area, there's the, yeah, there's the, the reservoir. Uh, that I grew up right around here. And this is right over here is the infamous Motel Drive, where you can imagine some very shady stuff goes down. Cemeteries over here, right off the freeway. You can, you can just imagine what, what it's like growing up in this area. Um, and, and I can, but at the same time, I can talk about the great things like right over here is where you can find the best chocolate malts in the world at this mom's old fashioned burgers. Or um, I could talk about um, over here, the best tacos in Fresno. We're, we're serious about tacos is over here at this little um, strip mall where this taco place is. Um, these are just, I, I could talk about being from Fresno, but it better when I explain that fact. I could talk, you know, I, and, I, and I have said, and I mentioned, oh yeah, you know, I grew up in a rough neighborhood and so forth, but you, you can't just say it. You have to explain it. So where I grew up right here used to be suburbs um, for what was the downtown area right here. This used to be suburbs where I grew up. And then what happened was all the middle class and um, and the wealthy people, and the wealthy people are still around in this area a bit, but for the most part, they all moved up here, what we call white flight. And what was left behind was neighborhoods that a lot of um, people from different parts of Fresno, by the way, Fresno has a long history of segregation and horrible redlining and stuff like that. But my neighborhood became what we call a transitioning neighborhood. And my family at the time was transitioning from a nicer part of Fresno down to here. So where I grew up in that time, by, by just not just saying I grew up in a rough neighborhood, but explaining that it was a transitioning neighborhood, that the economic uh, stability that was once there was moving up away from the area. And what came in was uh, influx of immigrants and um, people who uh, lower income and just vacancy by and 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 the people who were left behind were older they they weren't the you know their kids weren't their kids took off by explaining that a little bit more in detail instead of just saying a fact i give an audience a description all right um it's the idea that you are um, telling your audience it's more than just a fact. I can talk about, oh, over here is uh, Yosemite National Park. Okay, that's, that's a fact. Yosemite National Park's right over here. All right, right, right here, right here. And it's a popular park. It's the number one national park in the United States. That's a fact. But maybe it would be better if I was giving that speech and informing the speech about this region, if I didn't talk about, you know, Half Dome and the fact that it's one of the most recognizable landmarks in the world, just like the Eiffel Tower. And it's one of the reasons why it's the most uh, recognized national park or the fact that um, it's, it's one of the oldest national parks. So it's been around forever and then the, its reputation, it's, it's, lineage goes back for generations. There's so much I can talk about in, instead of just saying a fact. So uh, when you're thinking about your concepts and, and your explanation, your examples and your sub points, um, think about how to explain it. And the best way to explain something is thinking about how you explain visiting somewhere. Uh, we all live in Los Angeles now. 
for the most part. I don't think I have any distant learning students um, in my in my classes uh, this semester. But we all we all live here. And um, if I was telling somebody when they come to Los Angeles and how to visit, I would give them my little two cents on where to visit and go and where to go. And you think about how you do that too. Then use that thing that you do to, to then transition to your speeches. Because when you give your facts, it's like when you tell somebody, oh, you're coming to Los Angeles, you should go to Disneyland. That's, that's just giving a fact, but explaining how to get there or when to get there or what days to go. When to, oh, obviously, we can't go now because of the pandemic, but you understand what I'm saying. So it's just like going to the beach. Oh, you're visiting Los Angeles? You should go to the beach. Which beach? Which is the time? Which, which time? What is the best way? What is the cheapest option? What is the, the luxurious option? You know, what options great for the family? Which are options great for romantic um, endeavors? That is where, that is the, that is the most, com that is the thing that most students have experience with, is explaining what to do if you visit something. And by remembering that thing that you have done so many times in so many different ways, it becomes more comfortable for you to do the same kind of thing when you give a fact or an explanation in your speech. You give an explanation and then you follow it or a definition or a term or a instruction and then you follow it up with directions or, or um, explanation of it, just like you do when you tell someone to go visit something. All right, see how that works? All right, so today's um, um, discussion participation that you're going to do in the thread. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, we're going to go back to the first one, um, which is the main point structure. And you can, and I'm actually going to give you two options. You can do this one, which is you, you do the main point structure. You think about the main points you might be doing for your informative speech and write that summary sentence. You know, the one at the very end I told you about where you uh, write a sentence that has the key words for the two subpoints, and then right below, and I'm going to have examples, is you're going to do a, um, a, sub, a keyword for subpoint A and subpoint B. So it's going to have a sentence, and then um, main point summary sentence, and then below just two keywords indicating how you put those in uh, the sentence, okay? And there will be examples on the discussion thread. The second option you can do, if you don't wanna do that, you can go to number three, which was the explanation on when you visit things, is I want you to do that yourself. Um, think about a place that you've told people to visit um, or when they come to your neighborhood or, or things like that. And I want you to give a fact and then give an example of what you would tell them extra that they needed to know about what you told them. So like I, I gave the example of going to the beach. If you're someone who likes to go to the Angeles National Forest, you do that. If you're someone like me who loves San Diego and I tell people to go to Little Italy, do that. Sentence saying where to visit and then an explanation on what they do want to do. Because I'm going to give, I want you to relate something you've already done because you're gonna be doing something similar like that in your speeches, all right? Those are two things you can do for your participation points for this week, all right? Um, well, and I'll give you examples in the discussion thread. All right, have a good one.